let's try to explain how EMF is induced in the first place. If I have a wire, and this wire is placed in the uniform field, let's say the uniform field is pointing inwards into the board, okay, and the magnetic field is symbolized by the letter, letter B. Uh, and I were to, if I were to shift this wire up with a velocity V, this wire actually consists of many free electrons. Okay, and this, as these free electrons move upward, it is as though there is a current flowing downward. And if we use Fleming's left-hand rule, if the current is flowing downward and the magnetic field is into the board, the force acting on the electrons should be towards the right. The force acting on the electrons is towards the right. We can use Fleming's right-hand rule to figure out where the direction of the EMF is induced. Fleming's right-hand rule requires you to use the thumb as the direction of the motion. We have already mentioned that the motion was upward, so it's going up. When you try to form a right angle between your thumb and index finger and another right angle between your index finger and the middle finger, you will get the directions of the motion, the field, and the current. The index finger points in the direction of the B field, in this case it's into the board, and the middle finger points to the left. So this EMF will be induced such that there is a positive polarity here and a negative pole here. If this was a closed loop, then you should have current flowing in this direction. And as you know, conventional current is opposite to the direction of motion of electrons. And that is how you can use Fleming's left-hand rule to explain how electrons experience a force when it's moved in a, a magnetic field. And relate that to Fleming's right-hand rule, which tells you the direction of the EMF induced.